I recently read the book, The Personal MBA, by author Josh Kaufman. When Josh Kaufman was a senior in college, he accepted a job offer at Procter & Gamble to be an assistant brand manager. In his new position, he'd be working alongside people who had MBA degrees from top universities. Josh didn't have an MBA, and he couldn't justify going back to school to get an MBA and put himself in over $100,000 in debt. So he wondered if there was a way that he could master the fundamentals of business without getting an MBA. When he researched top business people that didn't have an MBA, he came across a brilliant business investor named Charlie Munger. Charlie Munger is the business partner of Warren Buffett, and together they developed the company Berkshire Hathaway into a $400 billion business. According to Buffett, Charlie can analyze and evaluate any kind of deal faster and more accurately than any man alive. Munger doesn't have a formal business education. He's a meteorologist and a lawyer from Omaha. Everything he knows about business, he taught himself. Munger says that he's able to understand business and make important business decisions by using a latticework of mental models, fundamental business frameworks that he uses to outsmart the competition. Josh got inspired by Munger, and he started reading hundreds of business books in search for the right mental models he could use to outsmart and outperform his MBA colleagues. As Josh read book after book, he started seeing reoccurring patterns, and he discovered that at the heart of every business is a five-part framework. Part one, value creation. Part two, marketing. Part three, sales. Part four, value delivery. Part five, finance. Josh says that without any one of these parts, you don't have a business. A venture that doesn't create value for others is a hobby. A venture that doesn't have proper marketing is a flop. A venture that doesn't sell the value it creates is a nonprofit. A venture that doesn't deliver what it promises is a scam. And a venture that doesn't bring in enough money to keep operating will inevitably close. So let's explore each part so that we can become better able to analyze a business and make better business decisions as an employee of a business or an entrepreneur trying to start a business. Part one, value creation. The question we need to ask here is, are we creating something people will actually pay for? The first thing to understand when building a successful business is understanding what drives people to buy a product or service in the first place. In the book, Trade Off, Why Some Things Catch On and Others Don't, Kevin Manny identifies two primary characteristics that drive buying decisions, convenience and high fidelity. Convenience means quick, reliable, easy, and flexible. People pay a premium for convenience. This is why companies like Instacart, a company that does grocery shopping for you, exists in the marketplace. People could drive to the grocery store and pick up their own groceries, but they choose to spend an additional $10 to have their groceries picked up and delivered to them. High fidelity means high aesthetic appeal, high emotional impact, and high social status. An example of high fidelity is Apple computers. People pay a premium for Apple computers because they love the way it makes them feel and they love that it shows other people that they value great design. However, you can make a product or service that makes life easier for people or makes them feel special, but there's still no guarantee they'll pay you for it. A great example of this is the Segway, a product that cost over $100 million to develop. The people that built the Segway were sure that this device would revolutionize personal transportation in the same way that the car replaced the horse and buggy. But when they finally released the Segway, less than 10% of their expected customer base actually bought a Segway. It was a very well-designed and functional product, but the market simply didn't want it. Therefore, rather than going into hiding for a year and making something that you think people will value, it's much better to build an early version of a product and measure your customer's response to it. From that point, you can make incremental improvements to your product until it's good enough for people to be willing to pay for it. My next book video will dive deeply into how exactly you can conduct this build, measure, learn process. The second part of any business is marketing. And the question we need to ask ourselves here is how well are we attracting and holding our customers' attention? When Apple launched the original iPod, they told the world that this device would be 1,000 songs in your pocket. This statement, this idea, was remarkable and it violated people's expectations. It made people pause and take notice of the new product. 
In the book, The Purple Cow, author Seth Godin uses a wonderful metaphor to illustrate this marketing principle. Let's say you're driving down the highway and you see a field full of brown cows. A field full of brown cows is ordinary and boring. But if you suddenly saw a purple cow, it would be remarkable. It would violate your expectations and it would hold your attention. Any business that can have a purple cow effect has a great chance of getting their customer to the third stage, sales. In the area of sales, we want to ask ourselves the question, how well do our customers believe and trust us? If a stranger walked up to you at a bus stop and offered you $20 in exchange for $10, you probably wouldn't make the trade because it seems too good to be true. You don't believe or trust them enough to make the deal. And the same goes for sales. People aren't willing to give up their hard-earned money unless they believe and trust a business can deliver on their promise. One way to quickly build up belief and trust is to get social proof. If you had a friend standing next to you at the bus stop who could vouch for the stranger, you'd probably take the deal. The equivalent for any business would be getting the recommendation of a key influencer like Oprah or getting 100 five-star Amazon reviews. If a business is unable to build up social proof, it simply needs to perform on a consistent basis and be around long enough for people to trust it. The more trust a business has, the more sales a business makes. The fourth part of every business is value delivery. The question we need to ask ourselves here is are we exceeding the customer's expectations? 10 years ago, if you were to buy shoes online at zappos.com, you would have received a pleasant surprise. The shoes you ordered would have shown up the next day unexpectedly. Zappos didn't advertise free expedited shipping because they knew that the surprise that would come from exceeding your expectations would be far more valuable. Customer expectations have to be high enough for the customer to purchase in the first place. But after the purchase is made, the performance of the offering must surpass the expectations. If you want the customer to be satisfied, come back and buy from you again and recommend the business to their friends. One way to exceed customer expectations is to build highly efficient systems that deliver high quality products in a fast and reliable manner, like Zappos did with their one day shipping. Another way is to have exceptional customer service. There's a story of a customer service rep at Zappos who noticed that a customer had ordered a pair of shoes that were out of stock. So the customer service rep went to a rival store, purchased the shoes and delivered them to the customer. Now that's exceptional service. The final part of every business is finance. And this is where we need to ask ourselves, are we making more money than we're spending? If not, you need to reduce spending in one of the four parts mentioned previously, or produce something of greater perceived value. Josh says it's really not more complicated than that. Yes, there can be fancy models and jargon, but ultimately, you're simply using numbers to decide whether or not your business is operating the way you intended. Being a great business mind is not about knowing all the answers. It's about asking the right questions and having the right mental models. With this five-part framework, you can ask the right questions and understand any business and skip MBA school. That was the core message that I gathered from the personal MBA. Josh has over 200 business concepts in this book, and it is a great handbook to have when analyzing or starting any business. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a productive week.